So hi, one of the Good Noise Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with... Hey guys, I'm Tom from No Trigger. And I am John from No Trigger. And we're going to ask some, some questions say about the upcoming album, Dr. Alum. So congrats on that, by the way. How do you feel about the response to the announcement so far? <clears throat> well, it's been a long announcement uh, process. We announced it all like earlier this year with a new EP that had some songs with it. And then now we're two days away from the actual record coming out, which is just awesome because <laughs> it took us fucking two and a half years to get to this point from when we started. Okay. So very excited to, uh, to finally be putting this goddamn thing out into the world. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Album fucking rocks. John, bro. you? Oh, how yeah. are you feeling, John? You feeling I'm feeling the same way. It's been a long two and a half years, that's for sure. Yeah. And it, yeah, it's really nice to finally get this album out to people's ears. Hell yeah. For sure. Album's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you, you, you checked it out? That's you guys great. guys listen to it? Oh, we yeah. Did hear it. We yeah, did hear it. at the advance. Yeah. <laughs> cool. You never advance. know. I don't know. You never know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's fair. That's fair. Uh, so, is there any meaning behind the album title or cover art? Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I specifically yeah. remember the album title being mentioned. It, we had a band chat going basically through the whole pandemic, and it just kind of it popped into the chat and I, I think I was pretty high on weed gummies and I was literally <laughs> crying, making sure that that became the album name. And yeah. You won. It was, yeah. It was yeah. like a funny group text uh, thing. Uh, Tom, our guitarist, Tom C, uh, the Baron, he, he, <laughs> he just like, it was like, yeah, whatever. So the doctor album is just an inside thing, but it was like, that's it. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is the doctor. This is it the is. final form, you know, like that was that. And then the cover art is Brad Bones, our bass player uh, on our first U.S. tour ever. Uh, he wasn't in the band at that point. He was just along for the ride doing merch. Yeah. Your merch, taking photos. Yeah, and now I he's got I, the cover. I took the wow. picture. It was at it was at our uh, it was at a show in like Austin, Texas, and uh, and it's just like we were going through all kinds of like ideas for the record, and I was like, "This is fucking it. This is the because his his like whole demeanor explains the the attitude of the entire <laughs> record." So. And it, and it kind of puts the whole thing full circle because it literally was our first first tour ever um, way back when, 2003. So, hell yeah. Know, worked uh -huh. out. I, I just want to know how you guys are going to follow up the doctor of all albums. Like, how oh, we're not there that? yet, Shane. I just, like, yeah, I'm just, I'm he just, just graduated. He, said he just got his doctorate. We'll see what happens when he becomes oh. a professor. Oh, yeah, yeah. Professor album might be. Professor <laughs> album he's got to take he's got to take his courses <laughs> oh my god yeah. um so can you guys tell us a little bit about your writing process for this album uh yeah well so it's uh the writing process for doctor album was way different than any other no trigger songs that we ever put together because it was the pandemic we couldn't get into a room together uh and we just kind of did it all on the uh you know like on garage band kind of kind of way before we always used to get into a room and hack out ideas and stuff uh very un uh very inefficient uh we'll say that the other way this way it was great because it was like fucking this we can we don't even have to have a drummer we can program this we had to learn it all mm -hmm. uh how to do it but uh Pandemic was the, the catalyst for, for writing the new way. And I wrote a bunch of the new songs, uh, which is new for No Trigger. Uh, I usually just write the lyrics, but I wrote actually a bunch of the music for this one. Oh. And, but everyone came to the table with tons of great ideas. We had a fuckload of songs that like we had to kind of pick, pick through uh, between everyone's. And um, <clears throat> we also... <laughs> We also might have microdosed acid the entire time, uh, which is new to our band. Also, for a lot the of new paths. <laughs> yeah, we wow. we kind of we kind of went for it, and I uh, I don't know. I think I think the record speaks for itself with how out there uh, we were able to get. <laughs> did I, did you guys find your new writing process here? 
A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Most likely, yes. Yeah. No, no, yes. The answer is yes. I mean, this this is the no trigger that we didn't know existed that needed to be forced out. Uh, yeah. And I think <laughs> I think now we have we have it's clear as day how to how to take it from here. <laughs> for know, professor a little album. bit of acid. <laughs> yeah, for professor <laughs> out. Yeah. Just a little bit. Uh, have you guys, uh, Shane Glory, ever ever tried acid a little bit? Say not that. yet. No, no not yet. Okay. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I'm, I'm keeping my options open. <laughs> Doctor Album is a great start. It's. I'm just curious. I was just curious. Like you know, mm-hmm. your listeners might need to know the truth too. So hey, mm-hmm. it's. I didn't do any drugs until I was 30 years okay. old at all uh and then from there on it was <laughs> i gotta try them all it's been a wild but, ride <laughs> it's been a wild ride uh but uh anyway i was just curious on that um don't do it if you don't want it. i was simply asking a question <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, all good <laughs> uh so what song off this album took the longest to write and which one is each of your own personal favorites john go ahead yeah, the lo- I I don't know about the longest to write because the you know the 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 lyrics is probably that's more Tom's department, but um, I think the more exciting stuff for for us is a lot of a lot of the members of the band all kind of came to the table with their own tracks and songs and you know start to finish here and there. Um, and a personal favorite of mine would be track two. That's going to be "Take Your Time," um, just kind of like a different realm of music writing that i went into over the pandemic and i really i really love tom's lyrics that he put over to it too and it just like it really fits the mold of of the band and like a lot of the content that's in it is like super fun um and that yeah that's gonna be my personal fave there the intro to take your time by the way uh was like one take uh almost it was we had to kind of do a little tweaking but uh I literally made it up off the top of my head. The whole war scene. <laughs> oh my like, god! We basically know. were yeah. living in the studio, pretending yeah. we were both on a helicopter because we were upstairs. Tom was downstairs, so it just we couldn't even see him. Mm-hmm. So it was just coming out of the speakers. It just made <laughs> the most sense to put that on the record. It came out of nowhere. I mean, and obviously, that, that was fun. But I think that I think the song that took the longest to write, or the the one I concentrated the most on, was. Uh, water by the beer can which is like a weird alt country song that we wrote but i really love it it's it's one of my favorites it's got some lyrics in there that really mean a lot but uh that one i was like i got i want to just see what happens if i spend like a week and a half coming up with a song and only one song and that i did that with that, that one i don't know if it's the best song but it's like it, it took a while, <laughs> and I, 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 I think uh, that one's the most, like, layered and complex if you kind of piece them, you know, t- tear it apart, maybe. You know? Hell yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Is, is that so your did favorite? You just... oh. Sorry. That's not my favorite song. I mean, it's one of them. Uh, I think my favorite song, and I've been saying this, I don't know why it's my favorite song. It's Too High to Die. I just love <laughs> every bit of it. It's, like, so different than anything we've ever written. Uh, yeah, it's got keyboards. It's got fucking whatever. It's it's like it's got it's acoustic guitar and keyboard. And then it it also kind of- it was the kickoff of writing for this album too, which is kind of bittersweet there as well. It's like the first song Tom sent over to everybody. It's cool. Yeah, and it kind of set the tone for like the the. I remember I I sent Too High to Die to John, and he's like, "Oh, cool, man. Uh, maybe for your side project, dude." And I was like. <laughs> Yep. I was like, no. Verbatim. I was like, no. Just give me a shot here. I think we can make this a no trigger song. And we did. <laughs> and we did. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> That's, That's probably the, the nicest way to like say, maybe, maybe not this project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, dude, this I, isn't it. <laughs> no. I knew exactly what he was saying, but mm-hmm. I, I think he's excited that it made the record. Yes. We 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 kind of rounded out. Uh, it from there you know there's a lot of old school no trigger stuff on on the record so mm-hmm. still you know, so so how the track with the album come about did you guys write the opener be the opener close be a closer just shuffle around and see what fits what was that process like oh that was like the the sequence to the record was like up in the air until like it always is up in the air yeah you, you write a bunch of songs and you're like well now what how do we fucking 
but we I think we nailed the sequence uh eventually. Uh we had a lot of different ideas, but we didn't write you kind of get a sense like what could be a closer, what could be an opener when you're writing stuff, but uh you don't know. Um but I think anti fantasy wasn't it was the first song on the record, but it wasn't gonna be the first song until like people were like, yo, like our label. <laughs> Mm-hmm. people our that's label the, that's one that's the one yeah, yeah. We're like, we're like okay, okay 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 you know so we listen to input but um yeah we don't really write we didn't write it as a cohesive record mm-hmm. it kind we of formed that way if, yeah yeah after the fact Fair enough. okay gotcha uh, so would you be able to tell us where headspace is at while you're creating this record <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh boy headspace mm-hmm well, John, where was your headspace? Uh, yeah, I mean, the 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 headspace is kind of basically what we were just kind of describing as, you know, the majority of this stuff being, you know, microdosing on on LSD to kind mm-hmm. of put ourselves in, in a in a certain zone where where things are being recorded and we made you know, a written. wide it was yeah. wide in our headspace. I yeah. kind of just like everything everything that was there made sense and we needed to to keep it specifically a lot of the skit stuff um that you'll that you hear um, yeah the, the funny stuff was all just like can we get away with this yeah yeah yeah, yeah let's keep it's it up clearly oh, like yeah. an op- a majorly open headspace because like if we were dying you know in the studio laughing and having a good time with the stuff we wanted to showcase that yeah, and that's just how like, it ended up on, the, on the record but like also lyric, like it, it's funny because like you you could say it, you you know if you if you just listen to that it's like well maybe this record's a joke and it isn't at all like the lyrics are literally my favorite lyrics I've ever written and some of the most intense personal stuff I've ever talked about and so it's kind of like there was like two head spaces there's like we wanted to make it a serious record and you could tell it's serious if you if you you know listen to how much there's in it like it's like so much it's stuffed with shit but not in a weird way in a a, i think a very uh creative way but lyrically it's serious but also there's like this like kind of fun silly fuck it cartoony aspect to it too and i think the combination of it really uh is the whole you know mo for the whole record it's like you know we wanted to we didn't want to be like the government <laughs> you know yeah every people have done that but i think we we do have some fuck the government songs on this record you open up with mm-hmm. it yeah <laughs> you know you gotta mm-hmm. it's a little funner it's a little lighter mm-hmm. you know? tasteful and tasteful. this like cartoon like disguise that you guys hide all this serious stuff behind left me very confused for the first couple of songs i was like <laughs> did like is this just one big fucking joke and then like as it progresses you i finally kind of got it but like it started out i was like D- this interview is going to be a joke because the record is also a joke like, what, <laughs> what did they sign quote. themselves up for <laughs> that's a quote right there <laughs> not a joke but you see what i'm saying yeah. it's like yeah the more i listen to it i'm like it kind of sits in i think i think i'm glad that maybe the first time through people would be like ah, i don't know what to do with this listen thing. to it twice <laughs> if you're listening to this right now listen to the record twice yeah. <laughs> yeah. on oh. spotify at full volume uh yes get those clicks absolutely oh yes yes um, um, so how do you recommend your fans to listen to this album for the first time? Should they do it in the car with friends, in the dark with headphones on? Is it a workout album, party album? What do you guys personally recommend? Oh, Tom's got a great idea that we've discussed with each other already. It's a workout album. I yeah. Mean, okay. You know, no, no. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's not a work. He, Shane See, says everything's workout. a joke. Like, everything's a joke. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. It's not a joke. This is, how, this is my personality. <laughs> but I would say... Best way to listen to it um, is, uh, I mean, get buy a vinyl record, maybe mm-hmm. get the LP, uh, smoke a joint, or not, but don't, it might, it might help, and may, then just may, sit back. May help you make sense of the record. <laughs> yeah. Depending on if it's legal in your state or not. We don't want to okay, break right. laws, kids. 
<laughs> um, and uh, yeah, that's that. I don't know. The other way would be uh, if you're under the age of, I don't know, say 17 uh, and you happen to find this record in like your dad's pile of records or some shit, you know, sneak it into your room, mm -hmm. lock the door, <laughs> get some pizza and just fucking let it whirl and start swearing in your bed. We think we think this might be we have a, we have this theory that uh prepubescent teenage kids might be the absolute perfect demographics <laughs> for this record. Maybe. It just all makes we might, sense. We we might be trying to capture the youth on this one. <laughs> the the no trigger shows are going to be filled with filled with tweens from this Not record. Not the tweens. <laughs> No in between. There's no twenty year olds. It's just literally, yeah. It's 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 middle school mm -hmm. <laughs> and old men. Whatever exactly. the kids are into these days, it's it's actually just no trigger. <laughs> exactly. Like that's whatever, it. Whatever this whatever pop music is popular. We're hoping. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh my god. Uh, so this one should be super super quick. Off the top of your heads, I want you guys to describe this album for new listeners in three words. No more, no less. Both you have to do it. Both you have to do that's, it. Sorry. That's John first. Three words. Voice kind of died at the end. Sarcastic. Okay. Energetic. Informative. There you go. Ooh. That was good. Ooh, good word. <laughs> um. Oh shit. <laughs> Those were off the top of my head too. You killed it, dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I. Three words to describe Dr. Album? Mm -hmm. I mean, these, these are some fucking impossible questions, guys. Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> I would say loose, fun. Okay. Um, uh, uh, dangerous. Okay. Ooh. I, like I could have made better choices with those words, I think. Uh, you know, maybe. <laughs> it's okay. It's off the dome. Put them all exactly. in a big pile. You got six <laughs> of them. Those are great. Oh, those are great <laughs> perfect. They're perfect. Uh, so in that same train of thought, is there a certain feeling or emotion you want listeners to have while going through the album? I don't think it's for us to decide. Yeah. You know, for what, what a person feels uh, when they listen to anything we write. <clears throat> but... Um, I think uh, I, I I just you know my my goal is that you, you see that we really kind of cared about it and that it's a sincere work of art that we're you know proud of and we're putting out there. Um, I think is is the goal. Yeah, yeah. there's total there's a lot of re like things that everyone can relate to on it as well, especially with the lyrical content. We think there. we think. Yeah. We, who, we are we, who are we? Who are we? We to judge, but exactly. it's relatable. <laughs> it's also a big joke. <laughs> yeah, it's a big joke. See, yeah, <laughs> one big oh, joke. Yeah. <laughs> God. Uh, so, what is your favorite memory that you made while creating this album? Ooh, mm -hmm. it's a great one. Thank you. Uh, I, think the, I think the trip to Michigan. The trip to Michigan was like pretty, pretty wild for all of us because it was right in the the midst of the pandemic in the summer of 2020 we didn't know if we were even going to be able to make it happen and we just kind of formed our own bubble you know we all drove out and and initiated the whole the whole process behind it and i think that for all of us was really cool because we didn't see each other you know we got to hang out for like two straight weeks in the cornfields and make music it was rad. For the listeners we recorded the bulk of the record in michigan uh in the summer of 2020 yeah. so july august 2020 which was like high covid lockdown yes. it was like the literal like everyone was losing their you mind you could go to the supermarket and that was about it barely yeah, yeah man yeah. so we it like being able to drive out with your buds like it wasn't a tour but we got got an airbnb for two weeks and we stayed mm -hmm. in it together it was phenomenal it was like it was it was such a good relief to be able to to get out. Yeah. I think John's right. That was my favorite part of the creating of, you know of the record was just spending spending the time with the with the dudes um, when you couldn't see anyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, that's awesome. If you remember at all. Yeah. You know?
Uh, now, was that like the only time you guys were able to see each other during the creation process for this album? No, I mean we hung out like outside at fires and shit. Okay, and, good. You know, like yeah. we, we were we're pretty we hang out as much as we can. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we had to record the rest of the record, the lyrics and all, you know, we, we had like two spots and, uh, we came back to Massachusetts, did that. So we were all there also me and mm-hmm. John mostly, but the dudes would pop in and out, you know, from time to time. Okay, yeah. good. Glad that wasn't the only time. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it was... <clears throat> uh, so picture this, you're on tour, you're at a gas station for a rest stop. What is your snack of choice? Ooh, dude. That is something brilliant question yeah that's brilliant wow <laughs> wow are yep. we talking american gas station or european gas we're station? talking american <laughs> well okay. also please give us your european uh pick as well i mean i know my answer do you know yours yeah. john oh yeah for sure all right you go okay here it would definitely be uh sour patch kids watermelon and an iced coffee of some sort that's very good all right. In the Europe, it would be paprika <laughs> chips, Coke, and an oh, cool. ice cream bar. <laughs> okay. Nice. Paprika yeah. chips. I've never heard of that. That's yeah, all that they, they love. That's they all they have love, there. That's all they have there. Everything's paprika. Everything. And wow. but it's actually great. It's oh, good. okay. Yeah, it's like a milder barbecue. It's weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's good. Uh, all right. So from <clears throat> from my I I have. Every time I go into a gas station and get snacks for a road trip or just because I'm fucking at a gas station, uh, I get the big bag of cheddar cheese cracker combos. The mm. big bag. Mm-hmm. You know, the little bag will do. Sometimes it's not enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I get uh, one of those. Uh, th- there's these new iced tea lemonade mix with that's not too sweet, but not not sweet. I, okay. guess, I forget what it's called. Honest tea. It's not honest tea. It's another one. Maybe it is. I don't know. So I'm an iced tea lemonade mix guy. Arnold mm-hmm. Palmer guy. But oh, Palmer yeah. is, is, is needed. And if I'm feeling a little frisky, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll get some, I'll get some Swedish fish. <laughs> okay. Feeling crazy right. with that one. Yeah, right. Right out there. Yeah. I know. Sorry. Ooh, settle down, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know. I know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, on the topic of food, if the band was a dish, what dish would the band be and why? Oh, my God. Pineapple pizza all day. Pineapple pizza. That's good. Yeah. And if you want to get super fancy, we'll put feta cheese and banana peppers on there, yeah. too. Black Ooh. tie. Black tie, no trigger. We got some uh, some yeah. additional toppings on that pineapple. Mm-hmm. But pineapple pizza is exactly our band DNA. Okay. And we why is that? All the time. It's literally on the right. You know, they right. make a rider. <laughs> we want pineapple pizza. Just give us pineapple pizza. It's just, just be, it's, yeah. It's perfect. It's the perfect food. Perfect. Okay. So Not you're the Hawaiian. perfect band. Not Hawaiian. <laughs> you're oh, the perfect that... band. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that... yeah. Okay. There you go. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's great. You, I'm glad you, I'm glad you notice <laughs> of course how could i not <laughs> interviewed a lot of bands but this is the perfect one right here exactly this is it this is it right here <laughs> all right uh so for the last couple of questions we're gonna shift completely away from music and go straight to death row boom so if Man. you're on death row what would your last meal be with a drink man you no, you're not shifting away from music you're more this is more food questions oh yeah, yeah. Love we food. love food here yeah, yeah. This is great this is all i want to talk about too I don't know though. What, John? You go. I my first instinct would say pineapple pizza, but okay, I kind Jesus of Christ, man. Yeah, but I, <laughs> if, it, if it's the last meal, it would have to be some sort of like Mexican dish, probably a California burrito and a margarita, and I'll be good. Ooh, Ooh that's good. That's good. Yeah. You know, I've I've thought about this in the past. I think I think uh. I, for the main course, I don't know. It's always like, what, what would you want, you know? But I think maybe like, maybe some of my ho- my mom's like homemade enchiladas. I know it's weird. It, I love mm-hmm. them. I love mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. And it's my mom, you mm-hmm. know? So if I'm going to die on death row, I might as well, you know, <laughs> go full circle and eat my mom's cooking. But then, dessert, strawberry rhubarb crisp with ice, warm, little warm. Mm-hmm. With a dollop of vanilla ice cream, and that is damn. 
That's my top. I think that's my top food. Yeah, that's pretty. <laughs> I great. mean, rightfully I so. Ever, I don't even ever go yeah. for dessert. That was like the, that was like the little cream on the crop right there. Yeah. yeah. Last meal, you gotta have dessert. Of also, course. I would also request heroin just to try it. <laughs> just to try. You're it. on a quest to try all the drugs, die. and that's all a very dangerous one to die. try if you're I've not gonna die. Die. heroin. Yeah. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. There you go. I'm gonna have to ask an inmate, but I would gotta get go it. out. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. think you could actually ask them. You know. Well, if they're killing you anyway, like why not? Exactly. Why not? Yeah. The heroin might kill you before they can. No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Do you have a drink to wash all that down with? Oh boy. Me? Uh, drink? Uh, I mean, my go-to drink. Polar seltzer, baby. Ooh. Yeah. Worcester made, Worcester consumed. <laughs> That's all I drink. I'm a milk. trader today. I got Canada dry. Oh, what you? Uh, bleh. I like the bubbles. The bubbles. Bubbles are good. Are good. Mm -hmm. All right, can we at least have a two-way conversation here? Like, what is your gas station food and last meals, guys? I mean, what are... <laughs> oh, we, I'm so glad that you enough. asked. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gas is, station is food ever, for me. Did anyone ask? No. I, I mean, we've gotten it like twice, maybe, but we've asked this question like we're interested a lot, a of, lot of times. Um, gas station for me, uh, I'd probably get Cheez Its, and then for a drink, probably one of the Starbucks, you know, like Ooh. coffee yeah. things, because yeah. those are yeah. they're just so good. Those or just good. like a bubbly. Yeah. Cheez Its are those great. Are good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shane, I'm going Lay's dill pickle chips. <laughs> And Ooh, whatever chips. soda catches my eye. Mm. Dill pickle chips sounds regional, Shane. Where are you living? I'm in New right? Jersey. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. yep. <laughs> I thought everywhere yeah, had dill pickle just chips. Just like yeah. paprika. Uh, well, yeah, true. True. Like, I oh, see dill pickle chips at Wawa, but I don't see them in Cumberland Farms up here. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, you got to get them when you're yeah. back at Wawa. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and then um, death meal, death death row meal. Um, I always forget what I say. I used to say Thai basil tofu with um, a taro uh, boba tea. I can't remember my my new answer, but I'm just gonna stick with that one because that one's just yeah, that's pretty good. good. Gloria's yeah, got probably some not gonna eloquent... be on death row, so <laughs> yeah, you need an answer. <laughs> Gloria's got the elegant answer. I'm just big old bowl of spaghetti and a sprite cranberry. Oh, fuck nah, yeah. Bolognese? Bolognese? Is it a meat sauce? No, or just we're, a we're going to tomato meat? sauce on this one. Yeah, all right. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Classic. Uh, if you could live in one fictional world for a week, where would you live? Oh, my fictional God. world. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Ooh. Sounds like an LSD trip. Wow. I mean, stay maybe it is. Could be. Could we'll stay, stay there for a week. Could yeah. be. Could be prison, John. Could be, <laughs> could be hell. I don't know. Fictional world. Mm -hmm. So many of them. Oh, um, I, I, I don't know why I keep this cute. Like, just no, this doesn't count. No, it doesn't count. That's not fictional. It is fictional. It doesn't count. I'm not gonna say it. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say. You know that show Pete and Pete on Nickelodeon back in the day? You guys don't know. You're too young. No. You're Camp too young. on Awana? Camp on Awana is like close. It's not Pete and Pete, John. Uh, that was Salute Your Shorts. Salute Your Shorts. That was Salute Your Shorts. Um, I don't know. There's something really like nostalgic about Pete and Pete, the show. Uh, and where, Pete. Yeah, I know. If you don't know it, it's not going to. But someone who's listening is going to listen. Is going to go like, yeah, fuck yeah, Pete and Pete. Mm -hmm. uh, that was my favorite show growing up. And it was also like in my formative years of like 13, 14, 15. And it's like, it's where all my happiness lies. <laughs> so I would go there. All right. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. I just saw it. It looks very familiar. So, but I don't yeah. think I've, I've watched it, but it looks really uh, It was a little yeah, bit it's... before our time. <laughs> I, just, I looked up the wrong I'm not trying dates. to age them, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm 40. So it's, it's, yeah, that I know. It's oh, like... I'm like half that over here. <laughs> You're 20? I'm 19. Are you 17? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Fuck! this is great. This Sorry, is the demographic man. we need. Yeah, man. That's, that's why That's why you're about. the best band. This is what we band. were talking about. Tell yeah. all your friends. Tell all your friends. <laughs> this is our demographic. Oh, man. Yeah, man. I got you. I got you. 
This is perfect. Oh. I hope you have a lot of friends. <laughs> I have like two. Yeah, we <laughs> have one a of podcast, them, Shane. bro. Come on. <laughs> oh man. Hey Shane, have yeah. you heard of this band? I actually <laughs> have really cool. no idea. Yeah, this is wow. so great. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking seventeen, nineteen. Wow, that's that's awesome. That's uh, you, way younger than I thought. You guys look older on on Zoom. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Professionally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> John, fictional world. Fictional world. <laughs> fictional world. Man, I, I don't know. Possibly, uh, maybe like seventies disco shit. Like that would be a fun little world to live in for a while. You gotta get specific, dude. That quite like you gotta pick like Game of Thrones or something, right? That's like yeah. the. You gotta oh, yeah. be like in a actual... yeah, but we don't we don't get too picky because some people are like, well, fictional worlds are stupid. And I'm like, well, I'm not gonna make this interview awkward by telling you you have to pick one. <laughs> like, yeah, cool. it's yeah. fine, dude. Just just pick something, right. man. <laughs> just pick something, man. No, no, uh, not you. What would be cool to be in? Not you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yelling at you, John. <laughs> Pick something already, man. <laughs> well, Living Tom went with like, like a a television show. I went with an era. Yeah, and it's not fictional. Yeah. It's not... <laughs> <laughs> the '70s happened. Can you like that '70s show? Isn't that a thing? Yes, think... there it is. Okay, yeah, you did yeah, it. Right? Good there job. it is. Maybe Maybe a little help from Glory. You got mm-hmm. it. Yes. Did it. A oh, fictional yeah. that '70s show world. Boom. Right. Um, so I have been asking the last question, and every single person we've spoken to have said that it is the most important question. Ooh. What's your favorite color? Oh, jeez. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Great question, guys. Thank oh, you. Fuck. Thanks. It really, yeah. <clears throat> really put me on the spot. We, we thought really mm-hmm. hard about this one. Oh yeah. Uh. uh uh, my actual favorite color. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it goes well with a lot of things. Is is gray? Is that a color? It's a shade. But it, yeah. it it's like there's something like when I wear gray, I like it. Um, it's a little you know, it's not fun, but it. That's the most depressing answer I could have gave. Yeah. It doesn't so get much sorry. worse than that, man. Yeah, it's, it's like <laughs> my favorite color, color is the color of tears. It shows <laughs> off. And it's a little sad. It shows off all of the sweat stains so perfectly in the summertime. Yeah, it does. At least it's like not brown. I have a gray workout shirt so like everyone can see when I'm sweating. Yeah. <laughs> favorite color, Heather Gray. No. <laughs> oh, man. I'm a, seafoam, I'm a seafoam green guy, so that's a little more fun than gray. Yeah, yeah, you are. There's the contrast. It's not as sad either. Yeah. Super yeah. seafoam. Yeah. yeah. Um, so as I said, wow. that, as I said, that's all the questions we have today. Is there anything that you guys would like to plug? Oh, actually, Shane, funny thing. We have a record coming out on Friday. I had no uh, idea. I don't know when you're going to push put this up, but uh, it probably will be out by the time it goes comes out. But it's called mm-hmm. Dr. Album. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, our band name is No Trigger. We've been doing this for a long time. But 20 years. Not, not really, though, because like there's big spans in between every time we put out a record. <laughs> uh, big ones. Like the last record we did was 10 years ago. Uh, but this this one in particular is the funnest uh the biggest joke uh no it's it's the funnest and the most like intense uh creatively we've ever gotten so we're excited for it to come out and um it's coming out on red scare and it's gonna be everywhere so check it out especially if you're under the age of 20 uh we have you it's probably yeah. tell your friends <laughs> All right. Oh, well, thank you for okay. this guys. It's been Tom and John from No Trigger, and we have been the Good Noise Podcast.